Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. Today I am going to be earning a bond from scratch in free to play using legitimate methods because people didn't <laughs> quite like the last video I made. It's fair, I understand nobody wants to make 50 accounts, but today we're going to be doing it the good old fashioned way. Now, realistically, this could take me the full 24 hours here. Bonds are very expensive right now. Currently, they're going for about 5.7 to 6 million GP, uh, which in free-to-play is going to take a while. If this video goes on too long, I may make it a two-parter, as I'm not really sure if anyone wants to sit through an hour and a half video. Now, there's actually quite a few interesting free-to-play moneymakers out there, and a few of them I've never tried before. So on top of being somewhat of a challenge video, I want this to serve kind of as a guide. So we're going to be doing a bunch of different money makers, even though it may be more effective for me to grind out one the entire time. That's not that interesting for you guys or for me for that matter. So I'm going to add in a lot of variety here. So hopefully you guys can learn something. So I have one symbolic gold piece in the inventory before we get started, but let's go. Now, similar to the pay to play method, by far the best way to get a bit of starting cash right now anyway is by completing the Christmas event. Once again, though, if it is not Christmas time and you're watching this video, I would highly recommend doing the Stronghold of Security. Uh, we could still do it anyway, but in its current state, the Christmas event is going to be a lot more effective. For getting early game money, I can get around 100,000 GP just for completing the Christmas event, which is by far the quickest way to get some starting cash. So I'll go ahead and complete the event. I'm sure you're sick of seeing it and I'll come back when I'm done. Okay, so there we go. Only five minutes to complete that quest and we have all of the things we need to start building up a pretty solid cash stack in free to play. Anyway, let's go ahead and sell off these things while we wait. Okay, already we're up to over 100K and we still have some party hats left here. Okay, so that brings us up to 125k and we're only 5 minutes in, that's so damn good. And we're going to withdraw all of our money and have a really interesting money making method that is kind of a daily method. You can't actually do this. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. So now we're going to go to Draenor Village and we're going to go pick ourselves up a Chronicle. Now if you come over to Draenor, you can talk to Diango and buy the Chronicle. Now one interesting change that happened to it recently is that the teleport cards are now sellable on the Grand Exchange. I don't think many people actually noticed that. And it is actually possible to resell teleport cards for even like 100 or 200 GP margin. Right now they're selling for about 200 or 250. Go ahead and buy 10 of them goes up to 168. The only problem is you can only buy a certain amount of these every day. And I believe it's something like 100. Okay, I think this should be it for teleport cards. Yep, you can only buy 100 of those per day. So we bought 100 of them for about 160 each, more or less. Now I went ahead and put actually one of them in the Chronicle just so that uh, we can teleport back to Vrock. <laughs> They're honestly pretty nifty to have, so I'm probably going to keep maybe 10 of them at least for now and we'll wield the Chronicle. It's just a really good way to get around RuneScape in free-to-play. The teleport bringing us right to the Champion's Guild. So we're at the Grand Exchange and they're currently selling for about 209. I'll try selling them for 300. Obviously, you're not gonna make a ton of money here, but it didn't take very long and we could potentially make around 15K. Now, one really good method in free-to-play is actually buying items from shops and selling them back on the Grand Exchange. Honestly, it's kind of the bread and butter of free to play money making methods. Now I checked on GE Tracker and there's a few items at the top here that are currently selling for well above their normal price. I'm going to take a risk on that. So we came over here to Horvik and we're going to go ahead and buy the studded chaps from him for about 750 each. I'll go ahead and buy maybe 10 pairs of chaps as we're not really risking money on this but we are risking a bit of a time waste if anything. Okay so there we go we have 10 of these studded chaps just to double check. I'm going to go ahead and buy a pair. Uh, looks like we can buy for around 2k. Yes, 2,000 GP on the nose actually. Okay, so we're dumping them in for about 20k, which means we profited 10k. Well, I'll see how quickly these sell off. If they sell quickly, I'll probably go ahead and buy more. You may have noticed I also put an offer in for the teleport cards. Just kind of a random offer while I was waiting to go do something. Throughout this entire series, I want to make sure I have my offer slots pretty much filled all the time because you don't have many and things can take a while. Okay, so continuing on with the trend of buying items from shops and selling them on the Grand Exchange, we're going to come over here to, where is he, Nirmoth. 
Uh, it's located in the Balador mine and we're going to be buying the steel pickaxe from him. Retail price is 500 GP and on the Grand Exchange it's selling for about 1500. Very very good margin of about 1000 GP. Now the only issue is that it is far away. Currently my method is going to be to run here from Varrock and teleport back with the Chronicle. Now I believe a quicker method would be to get the magic level requirement and teleport back to Falador. However, Ever, that would require getting my magic level up, which granted we may want to do eventually anyway. But that is a pretty big time investment of maybe an hour or two to get 37 magic, if not more than that. Okay, well that's a little surprising. Actually, the studded chaps are already sold. I will claim that, which means that may be a better option. Okay, so yeah, that is probably a similar margin and way closer, although we will have to hop worlds a lot more. Okay, so we went ahead and got another inventory of studded chaps and some of our steel pickaxes have actually sold off already. Now one thing I would recommend is to actually check the amount traded on a third party website. If we just have a quick look at the OSRS market, we can see that steel pickaxes sell about 2,000 a day on average. It kind of varies a bit. So what I do is I then divide that by 24 to get a rough estimate of how many we can sell per hour. So that comes out to around 80. And I'll do the exact same thing for studded chaps. Now I'm actually going to take out the teleport cards as I have a better use for this inventory slot. And realistically, I may actually use the teleport cards. Okay, a really interesting method for free to play that again is kind of on a bit of a timer is creating party hat sets. Now there's a few problems with this. The chief one being that you only have three offer slots and you need to buy uh, six different party hats. However, the good thing is that you can actually instantly buy pretty much all of the party hats and still make a profit. I know it's a little bit messy, but if we add all of the individual costs for the party hats together, we get 27,500. And currently on GE Tracker, a party hat set is selling for about 39,000, which means we're gonna make over 10k in profit per set combination. So that's really nice. All we need to do is right click on the Grand Exchange, clerk, go to sets, and we're gonna go down to the party hat set, combine it. Unfortunately, I didn't quite have enough money to be able to afford all five of them. Okay, those sold really, really quickly. Okay, great. Uh, so we got the money back for that already. That is 20k in profit right there. So I went ahead and used that money to buy another three of the blue party hats, which we can combine into another three of the party hat sets. We'll chuck those in there for 38k, and that is another 30k in profit right there. Now it's been about one hour exactly, and uh, we managed to collect about 190 steel pickaxes. Pretty good considering we're going to get maybe a 1000 GP margin on that. I just checked right now and they're selling for currently 2100, which is a lot more than what we had before. That's actually closer to 1500. Now we did sell, now I did sell off all 28 of them as well as we did buy some energy potions. But yeah, this is a pretty big investment. Uh, this could take a while to sell. I'm expecting a couple of hours, but look at that 396k. That is so good. I'm definitely willing to be patient. Most likely I'll have to bring that down to 1700, but We'll see. Now the rest of the party hats sold off for about a 30k profit. We'll take that right now. And these studded chaps I think have uh, dropped in price a bit. We're going to put them in for 1400 And yeah, let's move on to another method. I've kind of changed my mind here because... Oh wait, I guess you can't see that. Look how quickly these are selling off. It's been like 5 minutes and I've already sold off another 40 of the pickaxes. I don't know what's going on. I think someone might be trying to flip them. Yeah, I was just doing an inventory of chaps and then I might just go do some more steel pickaxes because that margin is not going to be around forever. We're not going to always sell those at that rate and there's going to be plenty of time to toil around with all these other shitty free-to-play methods. So I'm going to go buy another maybe like 30 or 40 studded chaps and then I might go just do another inventory of steel pickaxes because if these all sell off, I will have made 350k or 300k in an hour, which is kind of unheard of in free-to-play. Okay, the steel pickaxes slowed down a little bit. We ended up getting another 100 of them. Now we're up to 261, which if they sell off at this price, is going to be worth 547k. I'm just going to hold on to these for now, and hopefully they'll just slowly sell off as we do other methods. So the next super secret method is buying lobster pots. I don't think it's that secret, but they sell for 20 GP and on the Grand Exchange they go for about 300. Earlier today they're going for 700, but 
uh, 330. Now, what I like about this one over the steel pickaxe method is it is quite a bit closer to a bank, which means we don't have to do so much running. Even though it's probably less money per hour, most likely, I have so many steel pickaxes to sell off, I can't buy any more. So I'm gonna go ahead and buy a bunch of lobster pots, maybe one or 200. And then at that point, I'll have a pretty significant offer selling in all of the offer slots. And at that point, I'm gonna move on to a method uh, that is more active. One thing I wanted to mention here is that when you're buying anything from Port Sarim, there's actually a bank deposit box right here. It's very convenient. It's by the Entrana Monks. You cannot withdraw anything from it because it is a uh, deposit box, but it is significantly closer than the bank in uh, Draenor. Like, look how close that is to the fishing shop. We can go back and forth very quickly. Unfortunately, I forgot about this bank deposit box for the last, like, 20, 30 minutes, but uh, it'll save you some time. Okay, so I should have gotten more lobster pots in this time frame, but like I said, I hadn't realized how close the bank could be. Regardless though, we have 108 lobster pots. I don't think this is that worth it compared to the other methods. If they were still going for 700, that'd be nice, but I don't think so. Yeah, 300. Probably about 100k an hour doing that. Okay, I only managed to collect 54 studded chaps, and I already sold another 56k in steel pickaxes, like they're just selling so quickly. Okay, we're gonna pop these in here for $14.99, which is another like uh, 50K in profit maybe, not too bad. So I am gonna go and train my magic up a little bit. There are a few money making methods that are gonna require magic, as well as having teleports are gonna be extremely handy. What I wanna work towards is the bandit wilderness shop, and I wanna buy some items on the Grand Exchange and sell them to him. We can also telegrab Wines of Zamorak, that's always an option, although I don't really want to do that too much. So I'm going to go ahead and buy some basic runes, uh, we'll get up to Fire Strike, and then I think I'm going to go ahead and Fire Strike some Imps. The reason being that they have actually decently valuable drops in the different colored beads that they drop, and they're probably just as good magic training as mostly any other monster. Dude, what the hell? The Mind Talisman is worth 5,000? Is that right? That is such a good drop. Oh my god, 5k for a Mind Talisman on top of uh, the bead drops. This actually might be kind of good. So I'll stay here till all of my pickaxes are sold off, and then I'll probably switch back and buy more of those. But yeah, 5k for a Mind Talisman, that is so good. And I ran out of Earth Runes, great. Okay, so I've pretty much managed to fill up my entire inventory in about 25 minutes, maybe half an hour tops. And you can see here that all of our steel pickaxes are sold off pretty much. We have five left, so those are still selling really consistently. So uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and see how much money we made from this inventory, and then we'll go back and get some more steel pickaxes. And we're actually getting pretty close to 25 magic as well, which will unlock our very first teleport and a few other methods. Now you can see here that I ended up getting eight Mind Talismans in only about half an hour. The Imp actually has one of the highest drop rates of the Mind Talisman, essentially at a rate of about 1 in 15. So there is a 1 in 15 chance of getting a drop worth 5k in free to play. Unfortunately, the beads aren't worth nearly as much as they used to be. They're only about 1k each per bead, but that's okay. Okay, we'll just pull that out anyway. So another 200k in steel pickaxes. And I have 500k in my inventory right now. Bring this up to 700k and we'll hit collect up to 733. Now let's go ahead and sell off all of our mind talismans for about 40k just from those. Not bad. 40k from those and then we'll just dump the rest of the beads in here as well. And that brings us up to close to 800k. So yeah, I'm going to hop on that, get more steel pickaxes because they were still selling really quickly for that 2k price. And then we'll move on. All right, I am kind of sick of buying these steel pickaxes, and we have another large amount of them. And in the span it took me to buy all of those pickaxes, we only sold 12, which kind of means that it kind of slowed down a bit again. So we have 134 steel pickaxes, close to another 200-ish. So I'll leave them in here for 2100. That will net us 400k, which means we have about 500k in the Grand Exchange currently, and about 700k in our bank, meaning right now we have about 1.2 mil and we're about four and a half hours into this. Okay, so while I'm waiting for my items to sell off in the Grand Exchange, I have a method that I have tried briefly before, but I'm not really sure how effective it is. And that is buying items from the gem trader, either in Alcarid or in Falador. Now, there is a pretty significant margin on most of the gems you can buy here. 
mainly the uncut sapphire and the uncut emerald. However, the cut sapphire is also worth buying. So I'm going to go ahead and do this for an hour, and at that point, hopefully the rest of my offers will have sold off, and I'll see how many gems I manage to collect. I'm not entirely sure if that was worth it or not. We ended up getting about 108 uncut emeralds, 122 cut sapphires, and 27 uncut sapphires. Uh, we started at exactly 200k and we ended at 298, which means about 100k an hour. Probably not the best method, but you only need around 50k to do it for an hour, so it's pretty cost effective that way. However, I am stoked that all of my offers ended up selling off. So if I take all of our money out and hit collect, that brings us up to 1.1 mil. And then we'll go ahead and sell off the rest of these emeralds and sapphires. And that's going to bring us up to 1.3 mil. Not a bad start. Uh, we still have a little ways to go. Bonds currently being worth 5.5 mil. So we're about a quarter of the way there. Anyway, guys, that is where I'm going to end it for today. Uh, if I keep going, we're going to end up with like a 30 or 40 minute video. Uh, so I'm going to split it into two parts. And I'll hopefully be releasing the second part tomorrow. Uh, so there won't be much of a wait. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I would appreciate it if you left the video a like. And I'll see you next time.